five things to avoid doing when you're building a PC. So the first thing we're gonna start with is uh, making sure that you don't mix and match cables from different PSUs. So let's say that you've already built a PC and you're building another one uh, and you pull out cables from your old PSU for your new PSU. Do not do that. Um, there is not much standardization for the interior of these cables. And even though the pins are pretty standardized, so this is like your, you know, your six pin or six, uh, six plus two uh, for your GPU, even though they all look the same, they are not necessarily rated the same. So you could potentially do damage by using cables from a different PSU for the PSU you're currently using. Make sure you use the cables that literally come with your PSU. And if you buy um, you know, aftermarket cables, just make sure that they're specifically rated for your PSU. Number two, daisy chaining your PCIe GPU cables. So you see this all the time. When you plug in the six plus two, it's got this extra little set right here. People just take it, put it right back into the, uh, the other eight, eight pin slot on your GPU. For people that have been doing this, you most likely have been fine. It may have not caused an issue, especially on older cards that are say older than any of the 30 series cards. Um, you've probably been completely fine. Heck, you might've even been fine with the 30 series cards but it's fine until it's not fine. So the reason that this is not a great idea is because a lot of times these cables are not rated for the maximum power draw that the GPU can pull. So it's much, much better to run two separate cables. I know sometimes if all your PSU came with was these ugly ones with the, with the split, it doesn't look as great in your build. You can of course order aftermarket PCIe, uh, cables, but ultimately it's going to be better, especially with newer cards, 4,000 series, 40 series, whatever. When, when the 50, 5,000 series comes out, uh, it doesn't seem like power draws are going to be less than they are today. So uh, you want to make sure that you can draw power to your GPU safely and not daisy chaining your GPU is the way to ensure it. Again, I can't stress this enough. You've probably been okay doing it and it's totally fine right up until the point that it's not fine. Uh, so just run two separate cables, better safe than sorry. Number three, three, how do you do three? Tell me in the comments if you do it with the thumb or like this or even like that. I guess no one really does the okay, but one of those is probably fine. Uh, we'll, we'll go with, we'll go with the one from Inglorious Bastards. Try, tray, tray, however you say it. Anyway, improper, AIO install installation. So quick science lesson, air likes to be at the top of whatever system it's in. So just remember that air wants to be at the highest point in a system, especially hot air, it rises. So which way should you have your GPU or excuse me, your AIO installed? Like this or like this? Trick question, neither. Tubes down would be optimal. Why? Because air wants to go to the highest point available. So if we have the choice between having the tubes down, the air will be up here, which is far away from our tubes. This is the optimal setup, okay? Um, now, a lot of times, these tubes aren't gonna be long enough for you to do it this way, especially if the GP or if the AIO, if the AIO is front mounted. So this way is also okay. The main point is that your pump is below the highest point of the radiator. Anything that makes sure that this is not the highest point means that air won't be collecting here as much. Now, the reason that you want or that it's preferable to have the tubes on the bottom of the radiator is because of the same principle I just said. We would rather have our air trapped up here far away from the tubes if possible. This is not terrible, it's fine, it's just not optimal, uh, but you can get a little bit of air going into your tubes just because it's gathered up right here at the top, okay? I always think it's weird, like NZXT always puts this like on their website and all that stuff, and, and you see it all the time on, on all sorts of manufacturer websites. It's weird, it's just not optimal, right? So 
Uh, this is preferred, tubes on the bottom. If you can't do that and you're doing a front mounted radiator, tubes on the top is fine. Just make sure that it's higher than the pump. And of course, obviously, if the, if the radiator is a, as an exhaust on the top, um, then all the air is going to be just, you know, trapped at the top of the radiator. And that's, that's totally fine. So um, make sure you install your AIO properly. Number four, installing RAM in side-by-side -side slots on your motherboard. So most motherboard manufacturers, in order to have dual channel memory, they have a gap between, um, between the RAM slots. So if you are only using two sticks of RAM, you need to make sure to read your motherboard's uh, instruction packet and understand which two slots are gonna allow you to have dual channel RAM. I'm not gonna talk too much about the technicalities of single channel versus dual channel. All you need to know is it's better to have dual channel. So just make sure. I, I have, it's been, been a long time since I've seen a motherboard that has side-by-side -side slots for dual channel. Typically it's it's a gap in between. So make sure that you understand what your mobile requires and do that correctly. Otherwise you're literally just wasting performance for no reason. Number five, building your entire PC before you check power and post. So you build everything, you put all the fans in, click the button, nothing. Uh-oh. Once you have your MOBO in with your CPU, your memory, and your power supply, plug that bad boy in real quick and just check for post. Your motherboard should have a slot to connect a monitor to. If it's an older one, it'll be like a VGI. Um, if it's a newer one, it'll be HDMI. But you should be able to check for post. Don't worry about cooling. You're not gonna mess up your PC or excuse me, your CPU by just checking to see if it turns on. But trust me when I say it is much easier to uh, troubleshoot if you don't get post when you, you, you know, if you don't actually power on when you push the button, it's much easier to troubleshoot when you still got the shell, everything's open, all your fans aren't in, everything's not all connected than it is when all that's done. It's just a huge waste of time that to go back and undo all of that. So uh, check for post and make sure that your, your machine actually turns on before doing it. So those are the five tips, guys. Uh, I hope those help. If there's any other things you recommend for people when they're building a PC, please drop it down in the comments. Let's make this a community effort. We're trying to help everybody here. So um, appreciate the time. And we actually just posted a video uh, of a rebuild I did with an i7-13700K. So if you're interested in watching that, you can check out that video here. Thanks guys. Peace out.